Here we are once again in Grey Hack. <clears throat> this is probably going to be my uh, last um, single player part, I think. I did see that uh, as I'm recording this, this is August 12th, there was a uh, update on August 10th that says it uh, made some changes with the creation of coins uh, and a stocks program, which I actually have not... I mean, this is all news to me because I actually have not um, played around with the crypto coin aspect of this game at all. I didn't even know it was in there. So, uh, oh, I can see actually there was a, another patch on August 8th. Looks like they uh, reversed the order of email messages so the newest replies appear first. So, <laughs> looks like they uh, um, did fix some of the problems that I was having. Some tweaks in the mail program to make sending responses to mails more clear. That's from the August 8th patch notes. This is, there's been like uh, the patches to, to Grey Hack, despite the fact that I think the release date was like 2017, if I remember correctly, um, or somewhere about there. Um, it's still under active and, uh, and prolific development. So it's good to see. Uh, especially with a, a game like this, where it's uh, it's one of the better ones, it's good to see that it, it hasn't uh, hasn't been abandoned as a project. So, um, okay, enough with the patch notes. Um, if I recall correctly, we had I had accidentally started another academic record one. What's my uh, my karma? Negative sixty. I'm definitely in the black hat zone now. Um, but I can't take on positive karma jobs until I reach at least rep two, I think. So what we wanted to do with our last session here is we wanted so we're going to do the academic record job just to just to clear it out. Um, but we wanted to do we did a credentials needed last time. We've done a police record. We wanted to do a find and delete, and there was one more corrupt data. So I'm actually going to pick up those jobs now. <clears throat> well, here's a corrupt data that we can get. The client wants the remote machine to stop working. Be careful since the administrator will want to know who was responsible. Okay. So when we get to that job, we may dip our toes into the <clears throat> admin tracker um, and so on. Because we, we haven't really been clearing any of the logs, which, I mean, normally counter forensic techniques um, for an attacker on a remote system like this. Um, would uh, entail many different things, not all of which we are able to do in the game. But in addition to that, um, would also mean things like destroying evidence um, in the form of those logs and whatnot. And we haven't really been doing that because it hasn't really been a concern. We've been connected to the same Wi-Fi network this whole time and, uh, and all that. So um, we'll see a little bit, maybe like what that's about when we get there. The other one... Uh, I don't think we can pick up yet because there's only one find and delete remote file job and that's a rep two and I can't grab that one yet. Or can I grab it? No. Okay. So can I grab it? I just can't do it. Okay. All right. Let's begin with the beginning where we were last time. Uh, nope. This is the wrong one. It's this one. Um, and this is from a totally different job. I don't know why I'm going to copy and paste the entire email when I could just refer back to the email, but okay. I guess I won't. Come on. Highlighting is a little finicky. Hey, Arnold Chengst. The copy and paste is a little bit cumbersome because sometimes control shift C, control shift V, sometimes control C, control V. And in that case, if I, if I do this here, if I control C, Control V didn't pick it up under the clipboard. 
Control Shift C. Control V. Nope, didn't do it there either. So I have to actually right click there, apparently. I don't know. A little bit finicky. Oh my god. Okay, there's <laughs> some UI bugs here. Okay, so I'm down here at this line. If I hold Shift and push up, yeah, see, we got some UI bugs here. Hopefully not introduced from a recent patch. I'm just holding down Shift and, and pressing up and down right here, so. That'll do it. Okay. <clears throat> Let's do what we do. Uh, we did not actually have a chance last time to uh, run the Ghost01 uh, program that a viewer gave me. It is, there's a source. Did I not compile it? I probably didn't compile it. Ghost01, we're going to run that this time. Now, if I remember correctly, this one um, we will run on on the box when we get on the box. That's what it seems anyway. So let's end map. Okay, and see what we get. HTTP only. Um, but, but, but remote IP, the victim. Okay. So I don't want to make sure that we got the right box here. Okay. So HTTP is all we have. And I don't think we've actually grabbed any HTTP exploits, at least not that I can recall. So let's see what we have available to us. HTTP. Oh, uh, none of these look familiar. There's not that many of them. You know what else would be nice here is, and this is just totally a uh, working preference for me, is uh, the uh, terminal here is a little bit drab. Uh, I, do, I do enjoy customizing my terminal windows when I can. Um, but just the, the colors, it's just all one solid color, or gray, and a Linux terminal is a little bit um easier to read because of the color differentials anyway take advantage of all the relationships really injecting new password to a registered user okay dependencies on library kernel okay we don't know if that's available to us but this might be a possibility there's going to be at least one registered user and uh that is a uh, a local library and i believe that Every machine ought to be running it. Um, this one might be good. It's necessary to have safe for installed on the computer. It launches the exploit. Okay, yeah, that's fine. We got that. Um, mm -hmm. Any user? Well, we don't know if anybody's logged in. Um, but could be. Here's the contacts of the three port forwarding configured from router. Okay, well, we don't have any idea if that's the case. Uh, bank credentials, search all the bank credentials, all passwords. And Fluxba. We don't know if there's a root user. We don't know if there's port forwarding. Bank credentials again. Get access to a shell. Well, this seems like a winner to me. Dependencies, so, I mean, this library should be there. Any user, yeah, this seems like seems like a winner to me. And I did have a viewer say that we can get the source code version and um, check out and see what the code is doing, but we did do that last time, and it seems like the code simply is just a little bit of housekeeping, a little bit of setup, some print commands to get everything viewable in the terminal window. And then it just launches um, a Metalib overflow against uh, some probably randomized memory address and then some keyword that acts as like a, a sec, um, what was it, a, a sec string or sec token or something like that. All right, uh, so that was Partic. And do we need a 
probably need a port because almost all of them do need a, an IP and a port. <clears throat> okay, so no active user found. So there is nobody logged in. Nobody is currently logged in the computer. Okay, well, that's unfortunate. Then uh, let's... I don't think we actually need to know a username in order to do this. If I remember correctly, the last time I ran uh, one of these essentially password overwrite exploits, um, I think it gave us a list of potential users. So let's try combi here. All right. So Offma. Password for user Offma modified. Okay. All right. So now we got a username. We got a password. Okay. Um, now that that's done. Uh, it was Offma at password one. Oh, wait, it wasn't running SSH. Okay. It was running HTTP only. So let's see if there's a uh, login portal or something. No, no, there's no login portal. Will, although I do appreciate so that we have run into targets before uh, that had uh, HTTP open, and I tried to visit the site to see you know what the web service was running, um, and I don't think I got anything. I think I ended up with just like a uh, I don't remember even I remember if it threw an error message or not. Um, but this one actually does have a simulated site attached to it because the public IP goes to a web server HTTP is running. So that's a really nice touch. I really like that. I mean, it's, it's, there's not much substance here to the site. Um, obviously it's a grainy picture and a randomized name and, and so on, but it is, it is an academic institution, which maybe we just got lucky with the procedural generation or the randomization, whatever, or whatever is going on in the back end here. Um, but the fact that it is an educational institution and we are on an academic record job and that it, it it's <laughs> there's some verisimilitude here, uh, like your future begins with us, enrollments open throughout the year, like that's a really nice touch. Like, I really appreciate that. <laughs> All right. So, um, okay. So what do we do now? We, uh, we have creds. Um, HTTP is open, SSH isn't running, nothing else is running. Okay. Um, well, what we really need to do is some kind of... Uh, we just need a remote login. That's all we need. So we could try a couple of different services here. Let's go back to our browser. Because I just want to check and see... If yeah, I was just checking to see what libraries there might be exploits for to see if maybe there was something else. Um, Nmap when you when you run it as we are in the game without any additional parameters or anything, only it's a very limited scan. So number one, what it does is it will send a ping to the remote IP or IPs, check to see if it's uh, up and responding, which is why if you're on the blue team side of all of this, um, if you can get away without accepting ICMP, um, it's a good, a good way of protecting against this low hanging fruit type attacks, because if a machine doesn't respond, Nmap by default will just skip over it and it won't run any scans. But if a machine is up, then if there's no parameters, then what it will do is it will launch a, a fairly low level and limited scan um, born out of the need for efficiency and any more than anything else. So it'll only scan the, the first 10,000 ports, which means that if you also, on the blue team side of this, have services that are running 
um, like let's say SSH or something like that. Default ports are going to be default ports, but if it's possible for those potentially vulnerable services uh, to to uh, change their port assignment, then to have them something outside of the first ten thousand. Um, that would be ideal because then that low-hanging fruit attack, it's not going to see what those services are running. So in this case, what I, what I would do next, if this were like a real-life thing, is I might expand my scan um, because uh, port 80, default port for HTTP, that one's not going to change because the web server won't operate, right? Um, if, we, if we, you know, you can't make too many changes to, uh, to that service and expect it to still work with, uh, with the um, variety of web technologies that are out there. So um, I would normally expand my scan. However, I believe that Nmap in this game is limited to essentially there's no additional parameters. Let me uh, let me check that. Uh, yeah, so it's just very limited. You just feed it an IP address. There's no no additional parameters we can throw at it. So um okay or I, I lost my train of thought uh so the money yeah yeah that's right so that's normally what i would do next personally if this were the real world and i was trying to figure out how to get into this box so i would expand my scan we do see from our map scan uh the machine that we're trying to land on is number five and this is one two one six eight oh four uh which is so it's not the box that we're looking for. This is just a web server that's on the same network. Um, so that not being available to me, I guess let's try a uh, who is here, who is net address. Because um, that might be our, our next avenue here is... Uh, is uh, social engineering. <clears throat> okay, let's close the manual. I, I just want to see if this actually st does work as well. See, that's weird. So the the IP does work if we navigate directly to it. Domain name does not. Am I, hold on, am I missing something? Maybe Maybe we need to actually have a protocol. No. Hmm. That's that's a little weird. Oops. Hmm. It's it's a little weird because if one works, I would expect the other one to work too. Because I, I mean, I don't know how this game is working all in the back end. I'm just kind of like making inferences here based only on what I'm seeing. But I would think uh, that uh, that DNS. If it's randomly generating an IP and randomly generating a domain name, that doing some kind of poor man's DNS in the background where it's just associating the two for the duration of the job or something. Um, would be possible. Ministry of Contact is local. Yoko Lioneth. This is another thing that's always uh, really strange with these jobs. I've noticed that the email addresses and the domain names and stuff don't necessarily always match up, which in the real world sometimes it doesn't. Like, for for example, if uh, the uh, university has outsourced its hosting here, but if the university is outsourcing its hosting, then the IP address that we have probably isn't going to do us very any good because then it's not going to be their network or anything. So, you know, things like having the email address of the... Uh, generated participants match the domain names and stuff is it would also be well i'll say a little very similar to here um or if not maybe as a clue that's like okay you 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 can get on this box but what you're really looking for is creds that you can use to log into this other machine on this other network um, because that is totally a viable attack vector so if a if a an academic institution or any other business outsources its web hosting services, um, it's going to have an admin or customer portal. That admin or customer portal is either going to use uh, separate creds, so it's going to have its its own user repository um, with the username password combo, or it's going to have SSO set up. 
in a perfect world it would have SSO set up and then that would reduce the attack surface because then you don't have another credential pair hanging out there. But it's been my experience working many, many years in cybersecurity, doing security reviews, that uh, many vendors uh, talk up their product as far as its capabilities, but don't actually have any security on the back end to back it up. And so they'll say, oh, we don't do SSO. <laughs> we can't handle SAML. Um, so um, they'll just have a local user repository. So the customer will log in with the username and password combo that they create with the vendor. But the chances that somebody will reuse their password. So they're going to have the same email address. Like if it's a university, university email address. Of course they would because that's their customer contact information with the vendor. But the password will also often be recycled too because people don't want to remember multiple passwords. Even if they have a password vault, they're going to want to use the same password because it's just easier for them. So that's a viable attack vector to attack a vendor to maybe obtain that user uh, uh, username password combo. And then you can try it on other systems connected to the university. Um, so yeah, I don't, but that's not the case here. Obviously, this is just an example of you know things being randomized to a certain extent. Whoa, do you see that? Night mode just kicked on. Um. Uh, okay. All right. Now back to what we were doing here. I apologize. It's um, ADD's kicking in here. Okay. So we, where are we? Okay. We have HTTP running, nothing else. I would normally expand my scan. Can't do that. We did a who is, I have the administrative contact. We could try, well, phishing is not going to get, uh, services on, although uh, is there a, is there a bottled fish? Is it this? No, that's not it. Can't remember where the thing was. There it is. Um, is there a pre-bottled fish for uh, finding other IPs? Uh, attach a file. Okay. I mean, that's is this is this new? I noticed in the patch notes that they added something. Um, but I'm not sure what it was. I didn't actually read it, but, uh, if we can get a, uh, if we can get an exploit, send it off to somebody, we can get somebody to run it for us and we can set up a listener, uh, to open a shell that way. I know it was you. You don't know me. I found a few things. I'm sure the police would be interested in. You know, this is just an extortion thing. access to the camera and see if we find anything unusual these days okay well that's not what we're looking for i mean it's in the ballpark but not not what we're looking for <laughs> cool shooter.exe hello i'm the administrator of your workstation i'm performing maintenance on sort of you need to get a address in order to you know when you're ready okay <laughs> it's a version thing. Still alerts me that somebody has tried to enter into my account in an authorized way. about the possibility of you know, let you know in case you. What is the purpose of this one? Um, another thing that would be nice <clears throat> in terms of uh, improving the verisimilitude of the scenario here is if we were to visit the university site, um, every university is going to have, I mean, this is, this is good. I mean, this is a good start. Um, and for the scenario, you know, I, what I, the only thing I would do to, to enhance it, I guess, is what I'm trying to say, uh, is every university is going to have like, for example, a course catalog and like all kinds of stuff like that, which wouldn't necessarily be important for, um, an attack, but you could also use the site because every university is also going to have a directory. 
uh, public universities are public information, at least here in the state of Wisconsin, where I'm from, uh, we have something, uh, essentially we have open records laws in Wisconsin that require all public institutions to make just about everything available to the public. Um, if not on demand, then at least upon request, which means that, uh, in the case of our university, of course, we have a directory. Everybody is in the directory. All of our contact information is in the directory. Um, and as the, uh, the working in security there, as well as being on the faculty, um, it can be very frustrating, uh, because it essentially means that we can hand attackers, free and openly available you know lists of uh, of users and it makes spear phishing you know not so much anymore because we've taken a lot of security steps against it like mfa and uh, fine-tuning our email gateways and <clears throat> using conditional access policies and so on um, but in the old days and by old days i mean like four four years ago as long ago as that was um, spear phishing was a major major problem for us uh, because of, of the our open records loss so this would be a case where it's like if i'm looking for uh, a social engineering vector or i mean heck i haven't seen any any actual like osint in gray hack yet um but if we if you wanted to add osint as a challenge layer to some of these um then just simply having you know I mean, you already have randomized usernames and and all this kind of stuff too um you know throwing in faculty directories i could easily go to the the site and find uh faculty information or staff information including it uh that i could use in these phishing attacks too uh anyway i got distracted again okay so hello i'm worried about the possibility is this just to like um put an admin like on their guard to get them to look elsewhere while you're doing work i'm not sure what the point of this one is is you the administrator of the system? I'll let you know in case I have to check. In case you have to check something. Okay, I'm not sure what that one is. Um. Okay, and this is for getting the user to connect. Uh, I can't enter into my works. I have the wrong password. Okay, no, we we have a username and password. Okay, this is for phishing a password. Okay, so it doesn't look like social engineering is going to be the move here. Yeah. Okay, um, let's put our thinking caps on here. Let's see, wasn't there a, um, wasn't there a, um, exploit for, get access to a shell. Any user? Oh yeah. So we tried Partic. There wasn't a user logged in. So we could try a fish to get a user to log in. Connect as soon as possible to your. It's not their workstation though. We have netcat. Can't remember. No. Okay. Um. Let's see. I wonder if um, I'm starting to get windows piled up here. I wonder if I wonder if kernel the kernel router um, port doesn't show up on the new nmap scans. And I also can't remember if I actually have any of these already because some of the names look a little bit familiar. Can't you can't sort here? This is this is a problem. Okay, all right. You have to. Okay, there we go. I was gonna say you have to you have to look manually for these names, and I'm starting to get exploits piled up here. So, um, so I do have this one. Yeah, 
Yeah, I wonder if uh, I wonder if this just isn't. Yeah, let's try it. Cause uh, so uh, the um, let's see, I, I don't know if it's gonna bear explaining here, but what I'm currently thinking is when I run an end map scan. Typically, in the real world, Nmap, as I mentioned before, will by default, without any additional parameters, run a scan over the first 10,000 ports. But it won't do uh, port zero scans, essentially. So what I'm wondering is, is uh, did Nmap just not show that? Because this, this isn't the endpoint we're looking for. This is a web server, um, which means that it's it's not networking equipment, but maybe... Okay, so that that is the case. It just doesn't return it on the end map scan, which essentially means port zero, for lack of a better term, is is open to us. So now we're on the we're on the router, but it's not a router. It's a web server. Say this is this is my problem still with 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 uh, with gray hack is uh, we're seven parts into this. I don't know how much time I have into this uh 16 hours so i'm still really new at the game um just past the 16 hour mark and i'm still in my head like trying to think okay this is real world knowledge but it's a game so how would this be gamified and uh so there's still some translation there uh is what i'm getting at so we have a router that's a web server port zero is open it's running uh, HTTP. There is a site on it. It's just it's uh, it's it gets jumbled up. All right. So, uh, but um, uh, what we wanted to do is uh, is get on. Um, was it number five? Yeah, number five. So uh, to grab. Um, what was the name of that program? Scanlan. Okay. All right. Oh, we have cameras here. We haven't seen cameras before. Neat. Oh, wow. This is a way more complex network than the previous scenarios we've been looking at. Previously, like the scenarios consisted of like the box we were on and then the box that we needed but we have uh we have all kinds of cool stuff here all right so we are not that one that one no uh no okay no no there it is Okay, and where are we? One, so we must be over here. No. It's a uh, router with an internal address. A 172 address, I mean. Three? Is that us? Oh, okay. Hmm. See, this is even more confusing now. Um, all right, so the network topology here is our feed in. There's our edge router. Uh, then we have three devices connected to that. We know that this one to be a web server, but it's also a router. Weird. Uh, then we got two other devices. We have nothing else in line. The edge router connects directly to a hub. And that hub is connected to the targets. It's also connected to another router that has a camera attached to it. And then there's another camera over here. Router to hub to hub to camera to... Wow. This universe needs to... Hire some network engineers. We're gonna sort this out. Um, and also, typically, like 
we we haven't encountered anything like this at least so far in gray hack i think that it's in the game but i don't think we've encountered it yet um is there there would uh, there would normally be security appliances here as well right there would be an edge firewall perhaps internal firewalls or host base um and there was ids ips we're not seeing and um, all this kind of stuff too i do like that there's cameras though um and i am really curious about that <laughs> it's a nice feature ping simulation select destination how about over here well this this is this is really neat though like there's i like this show subnets show local ips oh i could have just clicked that instead of having to click through all of them damn it i forgot that that was there this is really neat though um i think that the the network topology here is probably randomized and it looks it looks pretty random i'm not going to say i haven't seen worse in the real world i'll tell you that much um but uh this is really neat i really like this i, I don't know how this works but <laughs> some there's some some magic going on here um okay so but uh this is what we're this is what we're aiming for here okay so it doesn't look like there's going to be any impediments uh and maps probably not on this is it um let's do that then Nine two one six eight O oh, dot is it over oh, one? It's O. Oh. Oops. It's one. Okay. Now we got we got lots of uh, options open to us here. SSH FTP. So uh, SSH. Ofma. I don't know if Ofma is. Oh, that's that's right. This no, this won't work because I think they're all local accounts, and that makes sense anyway. We don't have SSH. Oh, okay. Very well then. You win this round. Uh, anyways, it doesn't matter. Uh, we have H, uh, SSH and FTP. Um, let's go back. I think we had some pretty good luck here. Where'd all my, where'd all my exploits go? Uh, I got too many things open. That's another thing I would like to do. Uh, I'm, I'm not. I mean, I'm obviously not gonna get to uh, because this is gonna be my last part single player. But it would be nice to uh, spend some more time and uh, order some more equipment here. All right, one thing at a time. Let's close the mail. We probably don't need Notepad, but I'm leaving it open anyway. Don't need that. Okay. Not enough RAM available still, okay. I'm looking for one of the... I thought... Was that an SMT? That might have been an SMTP exploit. Not seeing. It's so it's so hard when you can't sort the files, um, to keep track of everything. Yeah. Okay. Well. Yeah. It was an SMTP export then. And the not being able to move as well. Bit, bit of an issue. 
That one's already in there. Okay. All right. Uh, I thought I had uh, Hinks already, and I don't see it. I do have Mirror Ray, though. So let's try Mirror Ray and see if we can... Uh, Change the, uh, I think, I think all the accounts are local. So if Offma exists on our target box, we may have to change that password again. I can't recall if they're local or not. I'm pretty sure they are. Do -do -do. One, six, eight, one, five, and port two. Oh, and I need meta exploits as well. New password. Password one. I've seen that name before. Chengst. Maybe it was in a previous challenge. And, oh, we don't have SSH. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, so let's... Let's do... Let's do get SSH. Uh, we um, I think we can have to get I think we can that's. Oh, do we have to script it? Oh, no. There it is. Uh, launch through first to five. Am I getting my... my... Okay. Just want to make sure I got my syntax right, because that's, that's the syntax. So, um, apt... One shot at the. Hmm? Am I getting a app get updates? Yeah. Okay. So the syntax is correct. Or I should say it's the same. Updates needed. Hmm. Okay. Then. Okay. Uh, there it is. Um, would normally we go installing new services and such on web servers in order to create an exploit? Um, it does happen. Generally, no, but it does happen. Only root can install the service. Yes, of course. I forgot I'm only guest. Um, but that's okay. I can at least... Uh, oh, right. Um, Oh, okay, so at this point, I can either elevate from guest to try and get root install SSH to SSH over to this other target box where I have um, user creds. We could try an FTP attack. Do we have FTP? 
FTP is not running on this. That's right. Because it's just HD. This is just a web server. Um, so I think that we are then looking for an escalate, which means that we can use. Uh, we can use. Where is it? Where the? F oh, there it is. We can use friend ghost one's script here and see what we can see. Or I could use the libver. One moment. Oh, crypto. Just dumping all these files on this box. Just, just going nuts with it. Wait a second. Did I misunderstand the code? Ah, whatever. I'll have to look at it later. Um, yeah, it seemed to, to me. Hmm. Now I'm going to want to run this somewhere else because it seems to seem to me that I misunderstood the code. It looked like it did a local run. Maybe not. Maybe it was a remote scan. Okay. Well, we'll have to try Ghost01 uh, Ghost script later then. So, uh, let's get libver then, and then do a local exploit or escalation. All right. And what did I use last time? What? How? Oh, no access. I'm running as guest. That's probably what it is. Okay. Init. Oh. I think I have. I think I have basic. Don't. Thought I. I thought I did. Um. Bank credentials. Harkle. Lick B. Fantasy. Uh, does it? Yeah, it did have net, right? Yes. Any user logged into the computer? I don't think there was a user logged into this one. I mean, the guest account apparently doesn't doesn't. Uh, no root user. Any user logged into the system? Mm hmm. Let's try, let's try this anyway. Mostly because I like the name Chantasy. <laughs> Uh, unable to find non-root user in computer. Okay. So, there is no user logged in. So, so that means that none of these are going to work. That's the one I was looking for. Uh, any user logged in. User logged in. Okay, then let's try, what else did we have? We could try net, we could try app client. Let's go with app client. Damn it, not what I'm trying to do. Take advantage of Oh, or I do have creds for this. So I could just I could just shell as a new as the other user. Offma, right? Yes.
What? Offma. Password one. What? I changed. What? Well, that don't make no damn sense. Okay. Then you, I guess. Let's not root user. Why did the password change? Is that supposed to be an example of the unknown administrator working against us? They changed the user's password at some point when they detected that we were doing things. Should I run the admin tracker program? I'm thinking that might be what we need to do. Uh, I don't think we're interested in that. All right, so let's buy this and see if we can change the Offma password again. Could just disconnect and relaunch a previous exploit. And I'm I'm not sure. I'm not sure what. Uh, not enough free to space. Damn it. <sighs> Uh, let's get rid of, I don't remember what you are. Wait, no, 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 that's not what we're looking for. No, stop. What the fuck? Oh, it's doing that thing again. Ah, damn it. There's a bug in the UI. If uh, the download fails, then it uh, hangs there. Downloading file hangs there. Okay. Slanger. So we're just putting everything, everything on this box. Just load it up. We, we have abandoned our crusade to change a grade, and we are becoming a human manual worm. Unable to find non-root user and computer. What? But I did this before. Oh, wait, hold on a sec. Is that what happened when we did a port zero attack is instead of landing on the box, it landed in the on the router? Yeah, that's what it was. That's I mean, yeah, OK, yeah, that makes sense. OK, yeah, that makes sense. Um, okay, then that changes things a little bit. Um, okay, so then in that case, no, no, we already have that. Um, Okay. No, we we are okay. So we, then on our target box, we have 
uh, SSH, FTP, and then there was the students and employees services that were running as well. Yes. Okay, that that makes a little bit more sense. We're we're reoriented now. Um. We don't, I don't know if there's anybody logged into that box. Could be. Now that we're on the router, we should be able to set up port forwarding. Um. Do we have to? No, we shouldn't have to, but maybe we do. I don't know. Um, or we can use this. There we go. Now we are a guest, and now we can angst. Okay, now we got chanxed and students viewer, and it was that's the guy. See the uh, some randomized domain names. I don't know. All right, save, exit. Just gonna, I'm just gonna leave everything. <laughs> I'm just gonna leave everything on there. I'm not gonna do any cleaning up. Uh, this one here, okay. And that's still still weird. Still weird. Uh, but let's see what the, the change that they made here. Yeah, it's still the newest ones are still appearing at the at the bottom. So maybe maybe my game didn't update. It should have. Let's let's see. Manage properties. Updates. Always keep this game updated. Install what? Always keep this game updated. Am I really running? Is this or is this when I installed the game? Uh Okay. It's not great if that's when I last updated it, but okay. Uh okay, this one's done and now we can get to the new one which I know I've been recording for about an hour so far, um, but that's okay. I'm going to push forward here because I do, I do want to do something new today. Um, all right. The client wants the remote machine to stop working. The remote IP of the victim is, let's get rid of all this dot dot. All right. So now Let's run ghosts script here. Okay, so it does do a port. So yeah, I was right. There is a port zero. Nmap doesn't do it. Um, so it's there is a port zero, and and now this script is checking that port. I'm actually going to maximize this so we can give it a moment in the spotlight here. Yeah, um, the, the this game is in a, it's okay. So while this is running, um, my 
my current impressions with gray hack is that it fits into a strange place um oh wow look at that anyway uh it fits into a strange place it's almost like an uncanny valley situation most hacking simulators are so bad that it's easy to treat them as a game uh, and understand the context of the game rules and the game world and all of that kind of stuff because it's nothing like or at least not close enough uh, at all um, to any of the real world skills tools techniques and 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 so on that none of that really enters into it you know you can play a hacking simulator game that is uh, uh, not a faithful recreation uh, and it's not a problem right um, your your brain easily gets around that Gray hack has enough verisimilitude and enough realism and uh, it touches on enough of the topics that it fits into an uncanny valley because on the one hand I want to apply real world knowledge but on the other hand it is it is a game and so it has to exist within the context of the game's world and the game's rules so it, it really yeah it, it really kind of stretches uh, spans that uh, that gap uh, where it's like it's real but not real enough and so you know this is what i would do but i don't think i should do that for the game kind of a thing so um all right i'm going to go back up here to the top and i want to take a look at the output here from from the ghost of one script which uh looked pretty awesome to me as i was seeing it fly by here all right so probe the ip we gave it uh, which means i i, I it, it, it seems i understood most of the code it's just that i missed something here as far as you know where it was launching and and host and, and target so it scanned that remote IP, apparently. Um, it has uh, it tried some exploits. It was able to get uh, guest, guest. Yes, we do have a root in here as well. Checking port 25. Uh, couldn't find some libraries, so some unsuccessful attacks there. A couple more successes, some more failures. Um, so, oh, I see, hold on, I see, I see what is, I see what it is. The memory addresses are not randomized. The memory addresses and the secure strings are exploit identifiers. So that so you can take those exploit identifiers out of the source code for the exploits, put them into your own code to effectively run the same exploit, and package them together like this. That's pretty neat, actually. It's not uh, realistic. Uh, it's not true to life, anyway. Um, but that's pretty cool. So we have some options here. Uh, we have it looks like six successful six successful shell attacks, three successful number attacks, one successful file attack. What's this computer? Where's this? An active root user phones. Computer obtained with credentials from users. So there is a user uh, that we have user credit. We are able to get user credentials. Gidenberg. which. We are connected to Gillenber. Well, okay. Uh, let's uh, to select an exploit. Oh, type ID. <laughs> Ghost, this is like cheating now. <laughs> um okay i mean th that was that's great work that's awesome that's, it, it, it makes things a lot easier um okay oh and i like how when you have shell access i just noticed that there's a little gold halo that's uh around the window here so you know that you're root all right but we were trying to get to two 
Um, let's uh, grab scan land. I don't really need scan land. I don't, I don't know why I'm doing that. Let's just uh, uh, let's let's do let's do this the 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 old fashioned way here. It was two. Oh, two. Not what I wanted to do. Not what I wanted to do. SMTP, our old friend SMTP. Whoa. Oh, damn it. Oh, that exploit. I'm going to take another look at the uh, at Ghost's code here um, in just a sec. Hey, we are guest. Oops, I closed the wrong one. I'm going to grab Libver and drop that in here. Oh, and I'm going to need to drop... No, 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 no. Ah, oh, this is so... Mm. If, I, if I had... Uh, my main complaints with, with Greyhack at the moment are all UI based. Like the UI looks great. Um, there are some functionality hiccups, like the window focus and the mail client stuff and um, and all that. That's it's not it's not a big deal, uh, but it's it's grading. It's grading. So All right, now I think I had a kernel module exploit from before. Not it was not. Damn it. Um what was I going to say? Oh, right. Yeah. So like, you know, it's it's a little bit grating, like it's fine at first, but the the hiccups they really interrupt your. Once you're experienced enough with it to develop something of a flow, the hiccups interrupt that flow, and uh, a little bit, a little bit. Maybe there's some tweaks that you can make. Now that I think about it. Uh, well, I'm. Okay, I'm in the middle of this. I'm not going to stop so that I can mess with this. All right, so... Um, bank credentials, bank... If, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think that the bank credentials one is just to obtain money. Right? It's just to find banking information so that you can transfer funds to your account. I don't think it, it's anything to do with... Of course, as I said before, with password reuse being what it is. Um, uh, the chances are that see I'm now I'm having some other weird issues here um, password reuse being what it is uh, maybe a valid way to get credentials all right I'm going to close the mail client maybe maybe I just have too many things open and it's just starting to cause a bit of a an issue here um, I need to search. Hmm. 
What was the other one that I had? Oh yeah, that's right. Chantasy. But my objective is... No, I forgot my objective. He wants the remote machine to stop working. Oh, be careful since the administrator will want to know who is responsible. That's right. This is the one where he needed to worry about that. So actually, I want to try that. Uh, what was it? Admin monitor. I want to try that. I want to, I haven't, I haven't run this yet. I don't even know what. It, is that, is this going to hang here and do something if something happens? Scan lib. Was there already a utility to do the thing? Oops. Is there already a utility to do the thing that I wanted to do? Analyze the... Okay, no. Scanner. Oh, so there are firewalls. I just haven't run into any yet. I haven't tried this yet either. There's okay, maybe maybe I should do another part here. Cause there's so much about the game that I haven't even like seen yet. We've done decipher once. I don't. I've never run scan lib. I've never run scan router. I've never done a sniffer. I've never done a reverse shell. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe there's so many other titles that I want to get to though. Um, I don't think I'm done with Greyhack after this, but I also don't think I'll be doing another part, um, until after the semester starts for me. Well, okay, that's gonna, uh, hang out there in the background. Um, uh, now what was I doing? Uh, shit. Am I, where am I? Uh, okay, I'm on the box I need to be on. I need to escalate my privs. Okay. Come on, brain. Get into gear. Alright, so we looked through in it. Yes. Um, okay, yes, we looked through in it. Uh, Chantasy, we were looking at. Uh, net so we have. So let's try that. Privileges obtained from user marriers. All right, Marriers is a non-root user. Uh, okay. So, um, but no, we need... Okay, the mission... What was the mission again? Ah, uh, come on. Close. I might have to close. All right, let's close the browser for now. Oh, I already have my milk line open. Wants the remote machine to stop working. So then it doesn't give us any information as to exactly what that means. I take it to mean that they want it bricked, but it could also mean that they just want me to power it off temporarily so do they want me to shut it down or do they want me to brick it i'm guessing they mean i'm unsure i'm guessing i'm guessing they mean well i guess if we get root we'll or do they want me to just delete the local libs or i'm not sure 
I'm not sure, but uh, that was we we're we're standard. Um, uh, we're non root right now, so we need to be root in order to do either of those things anyway. So what I done uh, just now insufficient. Why do I have two of these open? Okay. All right, so we need a root exploit. This is, this is our... Okay, uh, we also have app client and net. But now there, now there is a, actually a user logged in because I'm logged in here as this non-root, so. Uh, nope. Well, I, there might be a root user logged in. I don't know. Uh, kernel module one, yes. So ebus advance seems to be the thing. That's all, but that's non-root. Nope. Uh, I think I already looked at that. You must have made us look at uh, Nope. All right, let's try kernel module. I think I already looked at this. Non root. Non root. Okay. Let's try. Did I do it? Did I do in it? Come on, brain. Non root, non root, non root. Oh, that's change to see. Okay. Uh, what did I already search through then? All right, let's try app client. I can't remember if I did net now. Non root. Okay. Okay, then did I do net? Roots. Um, yes, at ebus advance, I remember. Okay. Okay. Um, We also have oh get in b oh that was in ghosts output the user uh oh so then i didn't have to go to the router i could have just hopped right to the computer dang i didn't even think at the time um Permission denied. Okay, so I do need to get root here. Okay. Alrighty then. Decipher. Uh, I'm gonna save this. I think what I what I actually need to do is um, I need to move this for a sec. Get another terminal window here. Do I have it under downloads? Yes. Okay, and another thing that would be nice is if we could just use decipher and then feed it a string to spit out the password instead of having to create a uh, an encrypted file here. Um, so let's can't create a new file with Notepad. We have to actually open it up again. 
save this as multiple users found select user root deciphering I don't know how decipher works. We don't have a word list. Um, the uh, hash word appears to be a hash value. How many characters are these? Thirty-two characters, so MD five looks like Raiders. Done. Okay. Uh, let's. I don't know what it wants me to do. I I guess I could just. I mean, we <laughs> could do the old remove all, right? <laughs> Uh, uh, remove all. No. <laughs> remove all recursively. Uh, if you hold on a sec, I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can find the meme. Uh, never mind. When you search for RM meme these days, all you get is a bunch of BTS stuff for reasons I'm just too old to understand. Um, don't get me wrong. I, I love them. I love them boys from BTS, but. Uh, Oh, come on, really? Um, but I don't understand the RM stuff. I, I'm just too, too old. I'm, I'm definitely at that, uh, I'm definitely past that threshold where, um, I don't understand the kids these days. And uh, thankfully along with that comes with the uh, feeling also that you don't care that you don't understand the kids these days. Not that uh, the kids these days aren't all right. Kids these days are all right. But uh, I also am done with caring about being cool. Oops. Can I just... Hold on. There's, there's, a, there's a way to recurse this. There must be. God damn it! Alright, you go away. Really? You can't recurse, you can't do dir. <sighs> uh, either that or I, maybe I just don't. Should just be able to, I mean, I guess I, I guess I could, it would be easy to script, I guess. Because you can just have a script that then checks through in CDs and then does RM on anything it can find. Um, I suppose. Although I really kind of feel like just having an RM. Oops. Uh, the um, log files were... There we are. I mean, it did say not to delete the whole log because that's suspicious, but I'm about to brick this machine, so... Okay. Oh, that's right. There was a log reader program. Yeah. There we go. Okay. I mean, it's like they're going to know I was on the box.
Uh, I think I think that ought to do it, but we'll also put it down. No, the manual just said. I don't want to reboot it. I want to shut it down. Okay. What? I was just in a place where it had reboot. So when I searched for reboot, it didn't show that. Might be a little bit of an issue here with the manuals keyword searching. Okay, apparently we can, we don't have shutdown. Apparently we have reboot. There we go. Okay, let's see if our client is satisfied. It's just so it's the having to go down here to click reply is just so weird. Customer satisfied with the job. All right, we done it. All right, <laughs> our karma is very bad. Man, the XP needed to get. Uh, oh, we got a new email here. The XP needed to get levels is so high. I I did two missions. I'm at 775. I think it was at I think it was at seven. 15 before I shit. I should have checked. Hello. I've heard about your skills and I have a certain personal interest in taking a look in you taking a look at the computer that is on the wire. You may find something that may interest you. I prefer to remain anonymous, please make sure to contact me. I, it didn't delete the email. Okay. Another UI issue here. The email is deleted, but it's not gone. Okay. Um, let's see how much time have I been an hour and a half here. Dang. Um, should I do another one? Sure. Why not? It's Friday. I do have work. I got to do. I should be doing but I'll throw another one here um <laughs> we are gonna oh why am i still on the disconnected from it didn't disconnect from the remote computer it disconnected from the root shell i'm still logged in as a user on that same computer weird there's the guest. Weird, 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 weird. Okay. Uh, we are going to use Ghost's super program here. Uh, because it makes things easy mode. <laughs> and I, I am not above. I mean, I'm not above cheating. As my, as my, uh, Wallpaper implies. Let it run. Let it run. And admin monitor didn't show anything. It didn't seem to do anything. That's another thing with gray hack while this is running. We'll pine a little bit more. Um, is I'm always constantly left with the impression that there is even more just beneath the surface that I'm not quite seeing. And what I mean by that is many hacking simulators are bad because they're so simplistic. They they simplify everything down to just clicking and occasionally maybe like entering a command or something, and it's just so easy mode. That it's like, uh, it's all style, no substance, or all sizzle, no steak. With Greyhack, when I first started playing it, that's what I was expecting. Um, and to a certain extent, there is kind of an affect that's uh, that's uh, here in Greyhack. It, it's it's got that 
uh, hacking simulator feel to it, I guess is what I'm trying to say. But I'm also constantly left with the impression that there is more underneath. Um, so what I mean by that is like most hacking simulators to run an exploit, you do what you're mostly seeing here in, in, in gray hack, where you go to some dark website, quote unquote, dark website, and you, um, choose an exploit and you run it and then it works and then you know you're good to go but gray hack does that but also lets you see the source code and now i'm seeing here with ghosts code that you can actually make use of that uh in your own creative ways if you like to that is a perfect example of the, it having that affect that has uh, the, the trappings and the stylings, but it also has some substance underneath. And I'm, I mean, looking at the patch notes today, I have a bank account. That's totally normal for a hacking simulator. You get yourself a crypto wallet and you're getting paid in BTC because you're a, a big time badass hacker. But you can also apparently in gray hack make use of that and you can farm and stuff like that. Um, or something like that. Again, I haven't dipped my toes into it, but what I'm saying is that it has the affectation, but it also has a substance underneath it. Now, that substance isn't necessarily deep, but Greyhack does seem to be taking the perspective as a game of, just like in cybersecurity, they say that you need to be a jack of all trades and a master of none. You need to know enough about everything in IT to secure it, but you're never going to have that depth of knowledge. Like, let's say you're never going to know networks as well as a network engineer, uh, that kind of a thing. It's the mile wide, inch deep approach. And Greyhack also seems to take that approach where it, it's got a lot of things in it and you can go down a little bit into each of those, but not super deep. So like you can dip your toe into uh, crypto mining perhaps. And I, again, I haven't messed with it, so I don't know for sure. Um, but you know, you can maybe dip your toes into that aspect of it, but you're not going to get the depth to the point where like you're, um, doing laundering or, uh, you know, minting NFTs or something like that, right? Um, just like you can dip your toe into exploits, but you're not going to be writing your own exploit code uh, or um, or anything like that, right? You're, you're just making use of things that are there. So, um, I, and to a, an extent, I appreciate that. that. That's part of what is making Greyhack a good hacking simulator to me is the fact that, that it has that sizzle, but there's also a little bit of stake there. You can sink your teeth into um, if you really want to. And I emphasize if you really want to, because another thing I'm really liking about Greyhack is the fact that it's there, but I haven't really needed to do too much uh, to accomplish the goals that the game is setting out for me. There's a couple of things I'm not really uh, liking so much in terms of the progression of the game and everything. Um, like I said, uh, my karma's in the toilet, and I can't do anything about it until I get enough levels, um, and that's not great. I would like, you know, it would be it would be nice if I had more of the option. I mean, it's it's gray hack, and the symbol for the game is a gray hat. It would be nice if I could maybe choose a little bit more with the the kinds of jobs that I want to do, so I could be the kind, you know, doing the kind of work that I that I would like to do. Um, it seems like the game is kind of forcing me down the dark path and then maybe later on I can find retribution, uh, or redemption of some kind. Gray hack redemption. Um, but, uh, you know, minor, all minor, um, complaints on that regard. All right, we're done. Uh, looks like we found a good number of exploits here again. Um... Which I do want to take another look at that code, actually. Let's do that before I forget. Come on. All right. What I want to see is... <clears throat> these memory addresses and sec util strings so 
Groups, files, users. If command, steal money. Can't decipher, okay. Checking permissions, I see that. Cat usage, okay, RM permissions. Okay, there's the bank accounts. Get router IP. Huh. It's amazing how it's this is only four hundred and well, four hundred and forty ish. I mean, I'm not including all these uh line breaks here, but with 400 and let's say 450 lines of code, uh, what is accomplishable here? I don't see any hard coded. So I thought that there would be, I thought maybe I missed a list of memory addresses and uh, secure strings or secutil strings, uh, but I don't see them here, which means it must be iterating through them. But I also don't really see where that's generated. I mean, here's an array. Let's look at our output. Where where the fuck are you? No. There it is. Scanning, and then here's a memory address. Okay, so and I oh I can't I that's right I can't search. It's another UI issue that I I have. I can't control F anything. Um. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. File system. Okay, there's where it's listing out the different exploits that it finds. Valid ID. Select exploit type. Probe function. No, I'm looking for... There it is. Scanning vuln. Okay, for vulns and vuln. Vulns is metascan lib. Oh, there's a okay. Hold up. That's that's the piece I'm missing. That's the and the it's broken. The the search in the manual is broken. Metal lib. What? Meta scan. Okay. This is definitely one of those times, as I said before, uh, uh, gray hack as, as it turns out, which I didn't, I didn't know this at first. <laughs> um, gray hack has a thriving community, apparently. Um, like I, if you, if you just do a search for, for like gray hack scripts or something like that, you'll find GitHubs and wikis all over the place that, um, people apparently are really into this game. I, I've been in the cybersecurity field for 14 years ish. Uh, and I've, I've heard of gray hack before. So one of the reasons I, I got it and uh, um, wanted to try it, especially since I started doing um, hacking simulators on this channel. Uh, but I had no idea that it was that popular. And, you know, it's a, it's a relative thing. Uh, I would say that Grey Hack appears to be um, one of the more popular hacking simulators out there um, just based on the, the amount of content that is out there. I'm 
trying to find the Greyhack wiki that I was looking at before. Um, but I don't see it now. Hold on, I think it was in KI yeah, wiki. Um, which is, it's, you know, it, it goes to show like within, I mean, as a cybersecurity professional, um, there is a place for, for games like this. I feel in, uh, the mainstream industry to use as, for example, a training tool or something like that. Uh, but it just goes to show how there's kind of two different worlds here, because as I said, uh, it appears to be one of the most popular, but even though I've been in the industry for so long, um, it's never come up, you know, in any kind of serious sort of discussion as far as, you know, being an actual tool of any kind. Um, so I think there's just a disconnect between, uh, like the, the overlap. If we were looking at a Venn diagram of like cybersecurity professionals and gamers, yeah, there's a lot of overlap there. That's practically just a circle. Um, and yet, um, you don't ever hear about uh, about games as training tools, um, which isn't to say that there aren't lots of cybersecurity professionals playing this game. There seem to be. It just doesn't seem to be a conversation that's being had. Although, you know, I'm not exactly the most social person, so it's possible that I just don't participate in these conversations. Um, what the hell am I doing? Oh, right. Um, I'm trying to find the, the wiki. Uh... Meta scan. Okay, I think we're just going to go with the Steam community. Um, oh, basic exploits with scripting. So, uh, user Isaac I posted this. How old is this? November 2019. Okay. Um, well, anyway, I, I don't want to waste too much time, but yeah, the uh, point is that there's lots of documentation outside of the game. The manual is definitely failing me right now, um, but... Um, there's lots of documentation out there. Um, I would like to look and to see what this meta net use and meta scan functions are, but that, that seems to be where it's getting the, uh, uh, memory addresses and, um, exploit names or sec util strings. Okay. Uh, anyway, sorry. Sidetracked. Sidetracked yet again. Okay. Manuals kind of being useless today so let's go away all right so wait what was the mission um you may find something that may interest you the fabbing oops hey Which one was it? It was... Oh, shit. We're... <laughs> We're in the wrong neighborhood. Uh, was there a computer? There is a computer. There were three computer exploits. Ah, uh, please. Um, <laughs> which one was it? Was it Uproni? My little Upronis. Speaking of uh, My Little Ponies, I have a I have a 10-year-old who, when she was very young, uh, had an interest in My Little Pony. 
it seems to be a rite of passage for young children. Uh, oh, that exploit. That uh, as they get older, the My Little Pony that they know and love um, is replaced by some hideous amalgamation of what once was. Um, as I recall, my uh, wife uh, went through the same thing with the My Little Pony version my daughter enjoyed, saying, that's not My Little Pony, they don't look like that, they look more like real horses. Uh, and of course, the one that... Oh, this needs net. This needs net, I forgot about that. Um, <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's easy mode this again. <laughs> And let Ghost of One do the work. <laughs> uh, anyway, so and now that my daughter's older, there's apparently a new My Little Pony version. Um, that, again, looks nothing like the one that she was familiar with. Oops. Uh, so. It's a rite of passage. You get older, they replace the My Little Ponies that you know with some other My Little Ponies that don't look anything like them. These days, they seem to resemble more of, like, pony versions of Bratz dolls or something. Um, done, huh? I wonder if something is... Mi oh, that's right. We tried running this before uh, locally, and we got that same problem. Uh, I wonder if something else is missing, and we're just not getting feedback on that. It may be. That might be what our problem is. Um, that's fine, though. I got many terminal windows open. Uh, let's close you... We had two versions of the manual open. Okay. Uh, back to this. Looking for... Uh, what was the other thing that was open? Employees. Let's try uh, libhttp again, though. It was 100, right? Damn it. Come on. So yeah, they resemble these days something more like brat cells. Anyway, the whole reason I brought this up is because the you brownie thing, and I was, I was wondering how the brownies are are taking the change. Uh, brownies aren't really much of a thing anymore, as far as I can tell. Uh, oh, we have Partick. We do have Partick. Try that. Um, but they were definitely a thing. 2012, 2013, 2014. I don't know if they're a thing anymore, but uh, I wonder how they're taking the change. 80, of course. Come on. No user found. Okay. I myself uh, used to work with a gentleman who considered himself a brownie. Who I other than being a brownie? I don't want to say I don't want to say other than being a brownie. Not that there was anything wrong with it, uh, but other other than that one thing that we did not share, uh, a, a very very good guy um, and a certified genius, which uh, helps a lot. Take it as a new password registered user. Do I have Combi? I do have Combi. Uh, UI. That's the word. One. Nieces. Why can't I? Why is nothing? There we go. Okay, um, ba -ba -ba, ba -ba. what else? What else was I doing? Um, there was another, um, There was another thing.
there was no user logged into the system. I recall that. Um, <laughs> excuse me. Um, <laughs> not what I'm looking for. I'll explore. I can't remember what I was doing now, though. What was I going to do? I was looking in bin or for something, or user bin. <sighs> okay. The router won't let me run it. Um, I mean, that makes sense, but it's so hard to tell what what is supposed to be what because routers and servers seem to be roughly analogous in this case. Um, okay, so now I have user creds to the other box. The other box is just running HTTP and was it some other program? There's some other service running. No, not what I wanted to do. No. Oh, no, it's... Wait, that's the public IP. The private ID. That's where I'm trying to go. Yeah, this employees program. Um, okay. What I need to do now is I need a shell exploit. Um, we already looked through those. Partic. Partic we tried. That requires a user logged in, and I think there was no user logged in. Um, this is, uh, this we used, we have the creds, the creds for that. Um, but, um, uh, no shell there. Um, are we on to social engineering then? See if we can get somebody to log into the machine, and then we can use uh, Arctic, because that's what we're missing. The user logged into the computer. Um, which means that we're going to need email addresses. I don't know if port forwarding is enabled, but we do have root on the router. Three port forwarding configured from router to the target computer. I this doesn't make a lot of sense, but okay. Okay. Uh, coming up on two hours here. Um, let's make a decision and and do something. So we just we just don't have. We don't have a lot of exploits available to us. 
50, 161, 105, 113. Oh, unless there's a login portal mobile hospital no no login portal again I appreciate the verisimilitude that there is a site um, let's see if it works in this case yeah it, it's weird that it that it doesn't do any DNS um, no translation so that's just a little strange. Okay. Um, what was I doing? Um, oh yeah, we need an email address. Uh, there was no login portal. There's no directory on the site, um, which means um, that I don't think that we could do, was it this one? Yeah, um, so port forwarding. And the manual again is broken, it seems. Uh, let me do a quick search. Rehack port forwarding. What? So this is what I'm seeing here. Um, Astro Steve in 2020, October 13th, asked, how do you set port forwarding towards a target? The reply from Decavoid, do Nmap from your rented, not home computer, to its router, not home router. Nmap will give you a clue how to do port forwarding. Nmap should show that there is an HTTP service running on port 8080. Connect to this service using browser.exe. That's... Uh, Deca Void is not... This what? Rasden offers bring up the browser on the rented server behind the router. Type IP address of router and add 8080 to the end of it. And then the okay. Decavoid again responds, bring up, the, okay, so Razden, bring up the browser on the rented server behind the router, type IP address of router, and add 8080 to the end of it. Now, if you're not familiar with what is going on here, IP address, colon, and then that number afterwards indicating IP, and then port. Makes perfect sense. Decavoid responds, 192.168.10 is not a valid IP address. Decavoid. Decavoid, my man. Stop. Okay, that's the most pedantic shit. Doesn't matter if it's a valid IP address. It's an example. He's saying you type the IP, colon, and then port. Does not matter whether or not it's a valid IP because it's an example of the format. How is he, Razdan, supposed to know what the IP address is in this scenario? Or the port number for that matter? Dude. Also... Your previous answers, far less than helpful. Okay, far less. Now, in general, this advice is so hard to follow. In general, this is not how port forwarding is done. 
this this isn't even port forwarding so i'm extremely confused all right we're going to we're going to start by getting this and we're going to see uh what happens when we run this because maybe there are already ports set up to forward and I, I i mean i haven't even checked so it's possible Okay, insufficient amount of port forwards towards the target. That is what I was expecting to see. But now to set up port forwards, you're supposed to use the browser? Bring up the browser on the rented server behind the router. So what I need to do is I need to pivot. Is that what they're trying to say? I need to get on another box so I can run browser and then I just visit. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Um... <laughs> I mean, having to pivot makes perfect sense. Like, that is a totally normal thing that we haven't even had to do yet. So it makes sense if we're ramping up the, uh, the challenge here as we go that we would eventually have to do this. So that I'm not surprised by. But this is not what port forwarding is or how it works or what it does. Um, where am I again? I'm on one. Oh. Oh, uh, hold on a sec. I just looked at the IPs for the Nmap scans that I uh, I was looking at before. Um, okay, our target is the web server. The uh, F uh, uh, FTP and SSH was running on a completely different box. That's not what we're looking for. All right, so I'm on the router here, one one. Uh, I'm trying to get to 172, this one here. Where's, there it is. Yeah, that one there. Um, that's weird, but okay. Why is, why IP, what? One, two, three, four, five, six. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, okay, let's not look too much into it. What's this here? Is that supposed to be a secured switch? Is that what the padlock and the red color is for? Okay, anyway. Um... So, uh, one, two head services running on them, SSH and FTP. So let's exploit, uh, that. Oh, I see. I think this was an SSH exploit. I think two nine two one six eight one two port two two. Um, maybe it wasn't. Can no longer remember which was no. Please don't. Okay. It's version one, right? Yes. Oh, it was mirror ray. Where'd it go? There it is.
Hurt. Okay. Um, but we don't have SSH on the router. Uh, so that doesn't really help us. Um, what we're looking for is a shell. Here we go. Two port forwarding configured from the router. To how are how is getting on a server to run browser supposed to forward ports from the router to our target? What the fuck? This advice has to be bad. <laughs> All right, here's guest access. I think guest will allow us to run browser. What else do we got? Pitch, guest access. Ripped, guest access. Etos. Uh, e system. A voyage. Okay. Let's grab pitch. This whole port forwarding nonsense is breaking my brain because it's like. Ah, oh, come on, you fuck. Okay. Um, well, base and e-base haven't really done us any good lately, so let's delete those. I'm not sure what they're even... Oh, that's right. Base and e-base are SMTP exploits. Oh, well, okay, whatever, it's fine. No, 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 no. I don't want you, I want it. This one. Now I'm going to have another stuck UI there. Downloading file thing because weirdly does that. Slanger. I don't remember what Slanger is. Slangler. Sorry. Slangler. Um, one and two, one six eight, one and two, four to two. Guest access browser. Okay, so now they. How does this work? <laughs> and then port eighty eighty. <laughs> yes, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> this doesn't make any sense this this has to be bad advice let's try somebody else Here, I, while while I'm looking up good advice, let me uh, let me uh, show you what port forwarding actually is and does. Okay, so um, Cisco diagrams are always such a crapshoot. They're either good or not. Yeah, this one will do. All right, so port forwarding, what it means is when a request comes in. So uh, uh, when you have devices, right? Uh, do I still have ScanLAN up? No, of course I don't. All right. So 
when you have devices in an internal network, they can be assigned a public or a private IP, depending on the IP address space you have available to you. But typically, in order to save on public IP space, uh, internal addresses will be private IPs, and there will be one public IP, essentially, that all requests will flow back to. And then in order to get those requests translated from the public IP back to the private IP, you can do what's known as NATing or network address translation. What that means is that there's going to be a NAT device somewhere on the network. Typically, it's going to be your edge router. And what that's going to do is much like DNS translates uh, URLs to IP addresses, it will translate public IP requests to private IPs internally. So it will say, um, you know, um, what um one nine two one six eight one five which is your phone um equals whatever the translation happens to be in natting but port forwarding is uh, another way that this can be done where it will allow web requests instead of having to flow through a net and doing a translation essentially to automatically be sent to the right device by indicating a port uh, that is listening for that device so for example everything that goes in and out of your router is going to be attached to your public ip all web requests will be made along port 80 and so on and then all of the internal translations all in local ports will be done there at that router if a request comes from the internet and let's say that you have let's say you have a web server and your web server is going to be listening on port 80. That's the default port. As you can see here, we also have FTP and uh, SMTP, so 2.5 and 2.1. Well, if you have three different devices and a request comes in for public IP, let's say in this case, what is the public IP? It's 50, 50 161, uh, 105, 131 or something like that. Um, if it's port 80 then it will route the traffic to the web server if it's port 21 then it will route that traffic to the ftp server and if it's port 25 it will route that traffic to the smtp server it's able to do that and then it knows exactly where to route those requests as they come in um, even without doing any network answer translation or anything like that because the ports are forwarding all of those packets to that device hence port forwarding so using a browser to visit like, okay, the advice was like, use the browser on the rented server behind the router in order to do this. No, all we're doing then is sending a web request internally even. So that's not going to do anything. So, you know, doesn't make any sense. So let's see what we got here. Uh, Nutseeker, February 7th, 2018. I'm new to hacking, but I'm having a hard time trying to figure out how to gain access through the ports. Okay, that's not what we're looking for. Um, so... And, and normally, in order to configure port forwarding, what you would do is you would be here... Here we are on the router. And what we would do is we would just... Con you can configure the router to port forward. Um, but the manual is not helping me here and the search here, uh, for the search here, um, for help online is also not helping because I can't find their wiki right now, but there is the, I'm seeing here, there's, uh, Oni Kiddo Cuz on November 3rd, 2019. Wrote the Hacker's Handbook Hacking Guide for version 074, so hopefully it's not out of date, and hopefully mentions what we need to know. Um, June 26th this year, where did you find the information about port forwarding? I'm just wondering, where did I miss the manual which explains port forwarding? Well, I think the manual might be broken. Uh, Dr. Blowglass, which is why I think you can't find it and why I can't find it. I'm also not seeing it in the guide, so I have no idea what you're referring to. When I search Control F for forwarding, the only thing that comes up is Dr. Blowglass. Um, search for ports, and that will give us many, many more results.
Uh, oh, okay. Here we go. This is how to set up a server, though. Um, not what we're looking for. Okay, so this is specifically for upgrading rented servers. So, maybe that's what those commenters on the other thread were talking about. Maybe, maybe they were talking about rented rented servers is another thing that I have not dipped my toes into yet in this game. So, how to survive is surviving a concern. Do not forget to clear suspicious logs. Oh my goodness. Apparently, things get real serious. Rent servers from regular shops and use them for everything. They are hiding your real IP. Well, I mean... Yeah. Um, <laughs> definitely. I, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm going to have to put more time into this. Honestly. Um, okay. Here we go. This is something, this might be what they were talking about. Um, firewall configuration. There are admin portals on port 8080, apparently. That's the ticket. That's what I'm looking for. <clears throat> Perfect. Okay. So, uh, this is more like it, and this is also more more true to life. Now things are starting to make sense because this this is more like the the gray hack brand of being on target, but um, simplified. Uh, because yes, admin portals is exactly what we would do. Um, and now I guess I can kind of see where that other commenter was like, "That's not a valid IP," but I you know what do you want him to fucking say? The fucking gateway? I mean. But yes, okay, so um, I will say that um, this guide, which is in uh, in Steam, on uh, Steam community forums, and I'm guessing is accessible through Steam UI as well as browser. The Hacker's Handbook Hacking Guide for 074 by Oni Kiddo Cuz is excellent. It seems comprehensive. And I was able to find what I was looking for relatively fast. It should be in the in-game manual, and it's not for some reason. Um, but on the other hand, you know, I'm not I'm not mad at it. All right, <coughs> so let's get a move on here because we're on almost two and a half hours. Okay. Well, if I'm not gonna if I'm gonna do another part, maybe I should just kind of nah. We're not gonna stop now. We're, we're already we're already doing this. All right, so here we have, as I was talking about before, external port, internal port. This is the forwarding, right? So if a, if a uh, request comes in from this port, forward it to this port, this address. We already have two. How many do we need? I can't even remember what the fuck we were looking for now. Uh, was it this one? Three. Uh, add entry, uh, port 9901. Didn't say the port had to be open. No firewall. Oh, how to port forwarding. Where am I? Wait, what am I doing? What was I doing again? Oh, I'm on, uh, I'm on, uh, uh, I'm on, uh, the two, uh, all right, I gotta go back. Or can I run it from here? No, let's go back. Can't remember what this was. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Now uh, we got. Wait, what am I doing? I can't remember what the fuck I was doing. I already have. 
I already have creds for this, for this box. Uh, I was, I was going to do a shell. I need a shell, not creds. Um, was it Partic? No. Shit, I can't, ah, god damn it. What was I doing? I got sidetracked with port forwarding and I forgot where I was at. I need. What what was the port for the port forwarding was for that for that, but why did I need creds? Did I or did Was it for No Shit, I can't remember what the fuck I used to do. Damn it. Um I can't remember what I was doing. Okay, I need I needed a I needed a shell. Uh, uh, why why did I need to do a port forwarding though to get that? Can't remember. There's no there's no exploits for HTTP. This is Partic is the only one. A user had to be logged in. I have creds to log in. I don't have access to that. Right? Was it? Oh, that's right. It was. Um, that's right. It was to get an email address. It was an email address. I was going to do social engineering. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Ooh. We'd get it back if we kept trying. All right, so uh, what I wanted to do is we need uh, in order to use Partic the user has to be logged into the computer, so we need to contact them. To get them to log in. Um, hello, I'm the administrator of your workstation company name. There we go. That's the one. Uh, let's do noning. Okay, hello. Do we need their, do we need their, their real name, <laughs> like their first name? <laughs> like the mark of a good fish. Hello, hello, username. I am the administrator, administrator's full name. Uh, it was Mobile Hospital. <laughs> I'm the administrator of your workstation at Mobile Hospital. So it's all about, it's all about verisimilitude when you're doing fishes. Uh, service. <laughs> This the service employees. Seven two six oh seven. No one would fall for this fish. I mean I shouldn't say that. I've seen some people fall for some real stinkers. Uh you do not yes you do. You most certainly do. Don't play around with me, you fool. Uh, 
Oops. Uh, yeah. Didn't say anything about his name. So I'm guessing that that was fine. I'm guessing that when it does a check for validity, it checks from the top. First variable, second variable, third variable, in that order. So I'm guessing it passed the name and administrator name um, and um, bypassed that, or uh, stopped at the, uh, the other one. That's, that's its name. Did I misspell it? Might have misspelled it. Do not work there. So I spelled it right. Um, would it just be mobile? Let's damn, damn it. I, when I did this last time, did I have to just do that? I can't. I can't remember. Let's try it. I can't remember. This is weird. I do not work there. Um, I can't remember if. Okay, let's just try mobile then. I don't think that's going to be right either, though. Mail not delivered. Who did I send it to? Why did I screw up that time? Ah, that's a good fucking wrong. Ugh. Charity Rusa. Please. So two one six oh seven. All right, I don't know. Um I don't know what it's expecting me to put there. Okay. Um, fuck. Um, let's do this one, I guess. We're going to have the same problem because... Why do I keep wanting to type Charlotte? Charity Rusa. 
Uh, anyway, I'm gonna have the same problem because I don't have the name apparently. Yeah, what the fuck? That is the name. M O B I L Hospital. Where's the email? Okay, the email does not say. What the shit? I don't know. I have no idea. What is... Uh, I mean, the domain name doesn't match. So, is the domain name supposed to be their workplace? But we have three different... We have four different domain names. There's mobile.net, there's Anther, there's Chrysler Guys, there's Tegrity, or Tegri. It's mobile hospital. That's what it says on the site. Okay. Hello, I'm Nieces. Nieces. I think that you have the wrong person. No, non egg. I'm pretty sure. Well, I mean, I guess I could try the other email address, right? I could try sending it to Nieces. I, I guess let's let's try let's try the other account. Since non egg is not being cooperative. is weird i do not work there i don't fucking know social engineering is definitely the weakest part of this game um just because the email system is buggy um but also uh this process here is, is very frustrating like, I, I have no idea, not only, like, I get we're filling in the blanks here, and that's, that's fine, you know. That's a, a perfectly fine game mechanic. Uh, it, it works for what this is. But, again, all indications are that they all work at Mobile Hospital, and I can't be sure if I'm contacting <coughs> a contractor or something, uh, because all of the domain names are, are all different, you know. None of the employees I'm contacting have the same uh, do email domain. They're all different, so I have no freaking idea. Um, damn it. Okay, uh, according to the guide that I was referring to earlier, it says company name is domain name. Okay. I think I tried that. I think I tried that with, with Nanang. Let's try it with nieces. Yeah, see what the Unless it's not passing one of the other checks and it's just 
telling me that it, they don't work there because it has to say something. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, um, I could try SMTP users list. Um, might have to get on another box to do it, though. Because SMTP is not running on this. a lot of work to be told that it's not going to run. Oh, wait, it is already on there? It's in crypto library. The hell you are. Um, okay. I really feel like social engineering is the route that I'm supposed to be taking here. I really, I really do. Seven. Oh, never mind. It worked this time. Why did it work? Okay, whatever. Um, all right. I'm just searching for some mysterious thing. It said that there would be something interesting. I, I don't know what. What am I even looking for? You may find something that may interest you. Okay. Please, viewer. Okay. Real tough customers working here at this place. There's Nang. There's Nieces. Okay. I'm not I'm not interested in any of this. Um Hmm. Why am I here? Why did I do this?
Freaking nothing here. Oh, there's a chat log. Um, no, this is the system log. Um, what's, is there a special program for opening the channel? I can't remember if there was or not. There's log viewer. Ah. Um. I want to look at it, but what do I use to get it? Um, it's browser. Oops, it's already opened anyway. Tools. Um, no, there was another site too, though. It's not it. Map. Chat. No, that's a chat server. Um, that's hardware. What am I doing? I got sidetracked again. Um, exploit report config land chat server look for chat reader or log reader I don't know why log why wouldn't log viewer do it isn't that like that? do I need to specify oh, I need to specify okay yes are you okay I did it come on I just downloaded it by sheer luck in the end I was able to sneak into the system finally are you kidding me uh, no, I was gonna I had to celebrate four days ago. I just gave up. Next time, I'll be right back. Okay. Uh, no, I don't care about this. Uh, I'm not sure why I would. Oops, it's already open anyway. Uh, mail not delivered is it was this just for a little intrigue i don't know perhaps um but no i didn't see anything there i mean there was a chat log and it looks like nieces might have gotten himself into a little bit of trouble but he was just responding to our emails so clearly he's doing okay uh, so I guess we'll get rid of that, and I'm going to get rid of this, too. I don't think we need it. It would be nice if we could just archive stuff, but uh, it doesn't seem we can. All right, let's clear this, and we are done for today, I think. I was I made this long because I was going to make this my last foray into gray hack. And I think that I am going to take a bit of a break uh, now um, and try some other titles out. Um, but I don't think I'm done with this yet. I do want to hop into multiplayer because uh, Greyhack Gaming mentioned in one of the comments in the previous videos that multiplayer has, well, I mean, obviously in addition to other players, um, but uh, um, other content that uh, other creators other players might have created oh excuse <laughs> sorry excuse me um which i'm interested in at least seeing oh why do i have so many of these open um and i got a terminal open here too um and plus uh every time i look at this game oh my god 
all these. Um, it seems like there's more stuff that I, I haven't quite gotten uh, a, a look at yet. Um, so I think I'm going to try maybe one more part for single player uh, and maybe throw some multiplayer in there as well. Um, what, what's my thing at? Still 775. Um, you know what I'm, you know what I want to do? Hold on. Not, maybe I'm not quite done yet. Um, I want to buy some stuff. What's my, uh, count at currently? How about we do some, uh, some actual, um, Well, we do some uh... <laughs> gray hack uh, gaming. If you're watching this and you you don't approve of uh, of using cheat engine and so on, uh, you may want to avert your eyes. But uh, this is a let's play slash hack, and I, I do often reach a point where I get uh, uh, a little bit bored or mighty tired of uh, <laughs> of grinding and look for ways to cheat i am in single player i would not i would not do this in multiplayer i'm in single player uh, i feel like it is not unethical in single player to do such things but let's see if we can uh, give ourselves some money so we can buy some uh, some goddamn hardware because i'm getting really tired of uh, the constantly running out of ram and shit so um we got 1305 right now <laughs> Uh, only 207 for real. Holy shit. This is going to be easier than I thought. Uh, let's spend some money. All right. What do I currently have? Um... Capacity is 350 meg, so this would be a definite upgrade to 500 meg at higher speed. All right, let's spend some money on this. Email received, hardware item details. Okay, let's go back to our bank account. Let's go back to cheat engine. And this will be decreased value compared to the first scan. No, oh, that didn't quite work out because this is not the value I was expecting to see. I was hoping to see 968. So let's do a new scan, exact value 968. Okay, 365 this time. The hardware you've purchased is ready to be installed. Click on the install button to open the hardware installation window. Oh, well, we haven't seen this yet. So yeah, let's, let's do. 